हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर राजीव जैन फ्रॉम जीवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी ग्वालियर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल इवेल्यूशन एंड प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ एनालिटिकल डेटा अंडर द पेपर फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी शैल स्टडी द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ statistical tool to the analysis of data how at different steps of analysis your errors arises how by different by taking different measures these errors can be eliminated how we process the data how processing of data using microprocessors using computers can be done and then most of the errors can be eliminated a problem that dictates the requirement we place on our measurements and results regulatory agencies place stringent requirements on the reliability of measurements and results reported to them this is the rationale for creating a protocol for regulatory problems screening the products of an organic synthesis place fewer demands on the reliability of measurements when designing the when designing an analytical method three separate considerations of experimental errors are made first error associated with each me measurement are evaluated errors known as known or believed to affect the result can then be minimized second the measurement process is monitored finally quality of measurement and the results are evaluated and compared with original design criteria an introduction to sources of error in analytical measurement effect of measurement error on result of an analysis and statistical analysis of data will be explained in this module so overall here we shall study how to minimize errors how to minimize errors and for that purpose we have to study what are uh, accuracy what is precision what is the true value how what is the regression line what is the calibration line and how best fit curve is obtained the, all the things we shall study here in different banner so one by one the errors which affect an experimental result may conveniently be divided into systematic and random errors as shown in figure 1 systematic errors are errors which can be avoided or whose magnitude can be determined the most important of them are operational and personal errors these are due to factors for which the individual analyst is responsible and are not connected with the method or procedure they form part of the personal equation of an observer the errors are mostly physical in nature and occur when sound analytical technique is not followed examples of this type of errors are mechanical loss of materials in various steps of an analysis underwashing or overwashing of precipitates ignition of precipitates at incorrect temperature insufficient cooling of crucibles before weighing alloying hygroscopic materials to absorb moisture before or during weighing and use of reagents containing harmful impurities personal errors may arise from constitutional inability of an individual to make certain observations accurately thus some persons are unable to judge color changes sharply in visual dilatation which may result in a slight overstepping of the end point another type of errors are instrumental and reagent errors these arise from the faulty construction of balances the use of un calibrated or improperly calibrated weights 
graduated glassware and other instruments, the attack of reagents upon glassware, porcelain, etc., resulting in the introduction of foreign materials, volatilization of platinum at very high temperatures, and use of reagents containing impurities. Errors of method. These originate from incorrect sampling and from incompleteness of a reaction. In gravimetric analysis, errors may arise owing to appreciable solubility of precipitate, co-precipitation and post-precipitation, decomposition or volatilization or weighing forms on ignition and precipitation of substances other than intended ones. In titrimetric analysis, errors may occur owing to failure of reactions to proceed to completion, occurrence of induced and side reaction, reaction of substances other than the constituent being determined, and the difference between the observed end point and the stoichiometry equivalence point of a reaction. Additive and proportional errors. The absolute value of an additive error is independent of the amount of the constituent present in the determination. Examples of additive errors are loss of weight of a crucible in which a precipitate is ignited and errors in weight. The presence of this error is revealed by taking samples of different weights. The absolute value of a professional error depends upon the amount of the constituent. Thus, a proportional error may arise from an impurity in a standard substance which leads to an incorrect value for the molarity of a standard solution. Other proportional errors may not vary linearly with the amount of the constituent, but will at least exhibit an increase with the amount of constituent present. One example is the ignition of aluminum oxide at 1200 degrees centigrade. The aluminum oxide is anhydrous and virtually non hygroscopic Ignition of various weights at an appreciably lower temperature will show a proportional type of error. Another type of errors are random or indeterminate errors. These errors manifest themselves by the slight variations that occur in successive me measurements by the same observer with the greatest care under as nearly identical conditions as possible. They are due to causes over which the analyst has no control and which in general are also intangible that they are incapable of analysis. If sufficiently large number of observations are taken, it can be shown that these errors lie on a curve shown in figure 3 that these errors are like that as shown in the curve figure 3. An inspection of this error curve shows small errors occur more frequently than large ones and positive and negative errors of the same numerical magnitude are equally likely to occur. Characterizing experimental errors. Accuracy. The accuracy of a determination may be defined as the concordance between it and the true or most probable value. It follows therefore that systematic errors cause a constant error and thus affect the accuracy of a result. For analytical methods, there are two possible ways of determining the accuracy, the so-called absolute method and the comparative method. Absolute method. A synthetic sample containing known amounts of the constituent in question is used. Known amounts of a constituent can be obtained by weighing out pure elements or compounds of known stoichiometric composition, these substances, primary standards may be available commercially or may be prepared by the analyst and subjected to rigorous purification by recrystallization. The substances must be of known purity. The test of the accuracy of the method under consideration is carried out by taking various amounts of the constituent and proceeding according to specified instructions. The amount of the constituent must be varied because the determined error in the procedure may be a function of the amount used. The difference between the mean of an adequate number of results and the amount of the constituent actually present is a measure of the accuracy of the method 
in the absence of foreign substances. The constituent in question will usually have to be determined in the presence of other substances and it will therefore be necessary to know the effect of these upon the determination. This will require testing the influence of a large number of elements, each in varying amounts, a major undertaking. The scope of such tests may be limited by considering the determination of a component in a specified range of concentration in a material whose composition is more or less fixed, both with respect to the elements which may be present and their relative amount. In practice, it is frequently found that separations will be required before a determination can be made in the presence of varying elements. The accuracy of the method is likely to be largely controlled by the separation involved. Comparative method. Sometimes, as in the analysis of minerals, it may be impossible to prepare solid synthetic samples of the desired composition. It is then necessary to resort to standard samples of the material in question in which the content of the constituent sort has been determined by one or more supposedly accurate methods of analysis. This comparative method involving secondary standards is obviously not altogether satisfactory from the theoretical standpoint, but is nevertheless very useful in applied analysis. Standard samples can be obtained from various sources. In several fundamentally different methods of analysis for a given constituent are available, gravimetric, for example, gravimetric, titrimetric, spectrophotometric. The agreement between at least two methods of essentially different character can usually be accepted as indicating the absence of an appreciable systematic error in order. Precision may be defined as the concordance of a series of measurements of the same quantity. Accuracy expresses the correctness of a measurement and precision the reproducibility of a measurement. Precision always accompanies accuracy as shown in figure 3, but a high degree of precision does not imply accuracy. Precision is a measure of the spread of data about a central value and may be expressed as the range, the standard deviation or the variance. Precision is commonly divided into two categories repeatability and reproducibility. Repeatability is the precision obtained when all measurements are made by the same analyst during a single period of laboratory work using the same solutions and equipment. Reproducibility, on the other hand, is the precision obtained under any set of conditions, including that between analyst or between laboratory sessions for a single analyst. Since reproducibility includes additional sources of variability, the reproducibility of an analysis can be no better than its repeatability. Minimization of errors. System, systematic errors can be reduced by one of the following methods. One of the important methods for reducing systematic errors is the calibration of apparatus and application of correction. All apparatus and instruments such as weights, flasks, burettes, pipettes, conical flasks, standard flasks should be calibrated. When an error cannot be eliminated, it is possible to apply a correction for effect that it produces. Another type of minimization of errors can be done with the help of running a blank determination, running a blank determination. Separate determination is carried out, sample is omitted under same conditions as employed in actual analysis means what is blank? Blank determination is the analysis in the same way. We are doing suppose volumetric analysis. It will be done in the same way. Uh, uh, sub solution will be added, solvent will be added from the burette to the conical flask. But the conical flask will not contain the analyte which is being analyzed. That is the, we will say now this is the blank determination. So it will eliminate the, by comparison of the results, it will eliminate or reduce 
different types of error. Object is to find out effect of impurities introduced through reagents and vessels or to de determine axis of standard solution necessary to establish the end point. A large blank correction is undesirable as precision of unlet, uh, analysis is reduced. Another way of another way of minimizing errors is running a control determination. A control determination side by side is done and it is compared by way of that errors are minimized. Another thing is use of independent methods of analysis. This method is very important. Independent methods of analysis. Suppose one thing is being analyzed by volumetric analysis. We are doing certain titrations. Then we obtain the result. And then we also obtain results by gravimetric methods of analysis. And also we also obtain results by spectroanalytical methods of analysis. Then all the three results are compared. If the results are almost the same, then we can say that the errors have been minimized. So another method is running parallel determination side by side. Other people may also do different types of determination. So the errors which are due to the human errors, which they may also be minimized. The most important method for elimination of error is by standard addition. Suppose in an experiment you are analyzing spectrophotometrically cadmium ions or you are analyzing spectrophotometrically lead ions by with the help of diethiogen uh, calorimetric reagent and a particular result is obtained quantitatively then you add something more more lead is added more lead is added that is the method of standard addition and by every time each addition you get increase in absorption and by that comparison, you will find out or you may minimize the error. Then another method for minimizing error is the internal standards method. Some internal standard is added and error is minimized. If you are taking instrumental methods, electroanalytical methods, spectroanalytical methods, radioanalytical methods, thermoanalytical methods, whatever the instrument is that, it, it's amplification signal is amplified by using electronic circuit that also minimizes the error. Another thing if you are using radio analytical method then it is the isotopic dilution by using different types of isotope and it is diluted and by that way various errors systematic errors are minimized. Significant figure. The term digit denotes any one of the 10 numerals including the zero. A significant figure is a digit which denotes the amount of quantity in place in which it stands. The digit 0 is a significant figure except when it is the first figure in a number. In most analysis, weights are determined to the nearest tenth of a milligram. For example, 2.546 gram. This means that the weight is less than 2.5. 1547 gram and more than 2.154 gram. A weight of 2.150 gram would signify that it has been determined to the nearest milligram and the, the, and the weight is nearer to 2.150 gram than it is to either 1.51 gram or 2.149 gram. The digits of a number which are needed to express the precision of the measurement from which the number was derived are known as significant figures. There are number of rules for computations with which the student should be familiar. Retain as many significant figures in a result or in any data as will give only one uncertain figure. Thus, a volume which is known to be between 20 0.5 ml and 20.7 ml should be written as 20.6 ml but not as 20.60 ml since the latter would indicate that the value lies between 20.59 ml and 20.61 ml. Also, if a weight 
to the nearest 0.1 milligram is 5.2600 gram it should not be written as 5.260 gram or 5.26 gram since in the later case an accuracy of a centigram is indicated and in the former a milligram so the things should be very clear it should always if value is 5.2600 gram it should be written as 5.2600 gram in rounding of quantities to the correct number of significant figures add 1 to the last figure retained if the following figure which has been rejected is 5 or over thus the average of 0.2628 0.2623 and 0.2626 is 0.2626 in addition or subtraction there should be in each number only as many significant figures as there are in the least accurately known number the sum or difference of the two or more quantities cannot be more precise than the quantity having the largest uncertainty in multiplication or division retain in each factor one more significant figure than is contained in the factor having the largest uncertainty the percentage precision of a product or coefficient cannot be greater than the percentage precision of the least precise factor entering into the calculation say the the use of calculators and microcomputer with the advent of reasonably priced hand held calculator has replaced the use of both logarithm and slide rules for statistical calculations in addition to a normal arithmetic functions a suitable calculator for statistical work should enable the user to evaluate the mean and standard deviation linear regression and correlation coefficient result obtained by the use of calculator must be carefully scrutinized to ascertain the number of significant figures to be retained and always should be checked against the rough arithmetical calculator to ensure there are no gross computational error microprocessors are used for processing large amounts of data the microcomputers may also be interfaced with most types of electronic equipment used in the laboratory this facilitates the collection and processing of the data which may be stored on pen drive or hard disk for later use mean and standard deviation when a quantity is measured with the greatest exactness of which the instrument method and observer are capable it is found that the results of successive determinations differ among themselves to a greater or lesser extent the average value is accepted as the most probable this may not always be true value in some cases the difference may be small in other it may be large the reliability of the result depends upon the magnitude of this difference it is therefore of interest to inquire briefly into the factors which affect and control the trustworthiness of chemical analysis the absolute error of a determination is that difference between the observed or measured value and the true value of the quantity measured it is a measure of accuracy of the measurement the relative error is the absolute error divided by the true value it is usually expressed in terms of percentage or in parts per thousand with natural or industrial products we must accept provisionally the results obtained by analysis of repute using careful testing method if several analysts determine the same constituent in the same sample by different methods the most probable value which is usually the average can be detected from their result in both cases the establishment of the most probable value involves the application of statistical method and the concept of precision in analytical chemistry one of the most common statistical terms employed is the standard deviation of a population of observations as shown in figure 5 this is also called the root mean square deviation as it is the square root of the mean of the sum of the squares of the differences between the values and the mean of those values and is of particular value in connection with the normal distribution 
the square of the standard deviation is called the variance. A further measure of precision known as the relative standard deviation RSD is given by the equation RSD is equal to S upon X. The measure is often expressed as a percentage known as the coefficient of variation CV is equal to S into 100 upon X. Comparison of results. The comparison of the values obtained from a set of results with either true value or other sets of data makes it possible to determine whether the analytical procedure has been accurate and or precise or if it is superior to another method. There are two common methods for comparing results, student t-test and the variance ratio test known as f-test. These methods of test require knowledge of what is known as the number of degree of freedom. In statistical terms, this is the number of independent values necessary to determine the statistical quantity. Thus, a sample of n values has n degrees of freedom. T-test is a test which is used for a small samples. Its purpose is to compare the mean from a sample with some standard value and to express some level of confidence in the significance of the comparison. F-test is used to compare the precision of two sets of data, for example, the results of two different analytical methods or the results from two different laboratories. The value obtained for F-test is then checked for its significance against values in the F-table calculated from an F-distribution corresponding to the numbers of degrees of freedom for the two sets of data is the correlation and regression when using instrumental methods it is often necessary to carry out a calibration procedure by using a series of samples each having a known concentration of the analyte to be determined a calibration curve is constructed by measuring the instrumental signal for each standard and plotting this response against concentration provided that the same experimental conditions are used for the measurement of the standard and for the test sample, the concentration of the latter may be determined from the calibration curve by graphical interpolation. The value of statistics correctly used, statistics is an essential tool for the analysis. The use of statistical methods can prevent hasty judgment being made on the basis of limited information. In addition, there is the rapidly developing subject of chemometric, which may be broadly defined as the application of mathematical and statistical methods to design and or to optimize measurement procedures and to provide chemical information by analyzing relevant data. There is no doubt, however, that the knowledge of the scope of chemometrics will be increasingly important for any competent analytical chemist. Data processing. Indicating and recording devices. Meter. A simple meter is one of the commonest output system for analytical measurement. It is adequate where only few readings are required from each sample, provided that a high degree of precision or a large number of samples is not involved. Common examples are laboratory pH meters, oxygen meters, and calorie meters. Digital indicators. As an alternative to meter, a digital indicator can be used to give a reading equivalent to that provided by the meter. The digital display system is preferable because it is clearer and eliminates errors that may be made in reading the meter. It occupies less space and it may be more accurate. Pen recorder. Where more detailed information is required, such as that provided by an infrared or NMR spectrophotometer, earlier a pen recorder was used. This usually be of the potentiometric type. This is an automatic recording potentiometer. In this type, the input voltage signal is compared with a reference voltage generator by moving contact on the potentiometric light wire. The difference is converted to an AC signal and the Amplified output is fed to phase sensitive motor. This moves the sliding contacts to balance the input and reference voltage. 
since a null balance system is used the response of the recorder is independent of the linearity of the amplifier integrator the determination of the area under individual peak is of particular importance in nmr spectroscopy and in gas chromatography the areas of the individual peaks in nmr spectrum provide a measure of the relative number of photons of a particular type in the sample nature in gas chromatography the area of an individual peak in the chromatogram is proportional to the amount of that particular component in the shape the area is more reliable measure than the peak height because it is independent of the shape of the peak and of minor changes in the column operating conditions electronic analog integrator in a typical nmr spectrometer integration is done electronically and the integral is recorded on the same chart as the original spectrum operation amplifier so called because they are used in analog computers to carry out various mathematical operations are characterized by high gain high stability and low current drain the basic operational amplifier is a three terminal device with two inputs and an output and is represented by the triangular symbol computing integrator until recently the major defect of the digital integrator has been the fact that the area figures they produce are not corrected for differences in the detector response to different components in the sample however several computing integrators available that will accept detector calibration factors and then print out a complete analysis in terms of component percentages digital computers in comparison with special devices such as computing integrator the general purpose digital computer offers a greater degree of flexibility and the ability to handle very large quantities of information because of its speed of operation and storage capacity a computer is generally capable of handling more than one instrument at a time however to do this it must have facilities that are not found in many computers designed purely for batch processing the analytical instrument is connected to the computer by means of a separate interface card they this will include an analog to digital converter to convert the analog signal from the instrument into digital form digital computers are now being used extensively for the processing of analytical data from many different instruments for the interpretation of results and for instrumental control computer controlled diffractometers for example and many other instruments and most of the instruments are computer controlled and are becoming increasingly common students in the module which you have just studied you have learned about different statistical terms and also how statistical tools can be applied for the analysis of, of different types of data how different types of errors can be minimized some errors can be minimized at the source and another errors can be minimized by comparing the results of different different types of analysis further you have also studied here for a various type of data processing devices how what are data processing devices how how data is processed and how different types of interpretation can be given these all things you have studied and ultimately you find here you can very well appreciate that statistical treatment of data is a very important has a very important place in analytical chemistry.